Let's learn how to graph rational functions. On our agenda, we're going to look at the properties of rational functions, and there are a lot of them. Vertical asymptotes, x and y intercepts, a new thing called holes, and horizontal asymptotes, and a new thing called slant asymptotes. Let's get ready. You're going to need your notebook pencil. You are going to need your calculator to graph, not on Desmos, because you do need to know how to graph it on your calculator, how to adjust your window to see it, and how to enter it into your calculator. So we'll take a look at um, the last one here. We've already looked at 1 over x and 1 over x squared. So hopefully you notice that this one is different because it has an x in the numerator. So the first ones are reciprocal functions. Um, all together they are rational functions. And when we get to rational functions with an x or uh, an x in the numerator, it has a lot more properties that we need to learn about. So we're going to be graphing first to discover the properties, but once we have the properties, in the future you're going to determine the properties first, then pick up your calculator to get the shape. So picking up your calculator eventually will be the last thing because you only need that for the shape. So go ahead and graph this in your uh, on your calculator. I did put the bottom in parentheses, so it may not normally be in parentheses, but when you're entering it into your calculator, you need to make sure you have parentheses. And then your graph should look like this. So let's see if we can make some sense of this. If I factor my denominator, that's a difference of two squares, so it's going to factor to x minus 3 and x plus 3. Um, we talked about limiting our domain, and that's where this is going to come in, because x can never be negative 3. So I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. x can never be positive 3. So I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. And then this point in the middle, 0, 0, that is an x and y intercept. If I plug in 0 for my numerator, I'm going to get 0 over negative 9, which is 0. So that tells us a lot of things. Notice the only math I did to it this was factoring, and that's what you're going to find for these. You want to factor and then pull your information out. So the vertical asymptotes will come from a factored denominator in the denominator. Your x-intercepts come from a factored numerator. So you need to learn where in the fraction you can find all of these pieces. How do we find the y-intercept? That's just like any function that we've done. You're going to plug 0 in for x and then solve for y. Go ahead and graph this one. Again, you need two sets of parentheses. It's going to look like this, which might look a little weird that it's a line. So let's factor it. x minus 3, x plus 3, all over x plus 3. If I'm thinking about limiting my domain, x can't be negative 3, and here's negative 3, and we're kind of, this, this would just keep going on your calculator, on your graph. Um, but that's not what's really happening. x still really can't be negative 3. So what happens is you get this hole, and this is a hole, and that is at negative 3, negative 6. When x is negative 3, because we already said it can't be negative 3 because of the denominator, you're going to have a hole there. I just told you that your vertical asymptotes come from your denominator, but guess what? Holes trump vertical asymptotes. Holes are more important than vertical asymptotes. You would not have a vertical asymptote going through here. You're just going to have a hole. So when x is negative 3, we have a hole. You're not going to see that on Desmos unless you hover over it. We'll say undefined. You're not going to see it on your graphing calculator because it's just going to graph a bunch of pixels. But if you go to your table, it will say error. So we want to know why do I have this hole and why does it look like a line in the first place? So maybe you notice that I have the same factor in the denominator and the numerator. So if I cancel those to simplify them to 1, then I really just end up graphing x minus 3, which is this line. It has a y-intercept of negative 3 and a slope of 1, but x can't be negative 3. So you will have a hole if there's the same factor in the numerator and the denominator. You will have a hole at that x value. Then you plug x back in to get that y value. Horizontal asymptotes. These are quite interesting. Um, we compare the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator. We're going to call the polynomial on the numerator p and the one in the denominator q, so I'll refer to them as p and q. And there's three different ways that these could be compared. p could be bigger than q, p could be less than q, and p could be great, uh, equal to q. So that's what we're going to look at now. So if you notice here, 
I'm looking at my degree of P is two and Q is one. So this is the example where P is greater than Q for the degree. Take a minute, graph that on your calculator. You should have two branches, so you will have to change your Y maximum to 30 in order to see both. When I graph it, I get this. Looking at my denominator, I know that I have a vertical asymptote at X equals two, which makes sense. And I kind of have all this space here, so I don't have a horizontal asymptote. So what happens when P is greater than Q, you will have no horizontal asymptote. Take a look at this one. Go ahead and graph it with the parentheses. And this graph looks like this. This is quite weird. Um, I am going to have a vertical asymptote somewhere there. And I do have a horizontal asymptote right there. And this, this part actually does end up going above. This part doesn't. So your, your graphs, part of them might go through an asymptote, but they are there to shape the other part of the asymptote. So if we look at this one, the degree in the numerator was one, the degree in the denominator was three. So this is an example when P is less than Q. And when P is less than Q, then you're going to have a horizontal asymptote of Y equals zero, always. If the degree on the top is less, you will always have a horizontal asymptote. And now our degrees are the same. So go ahead and graph it. Let's see what happens. We get this crazy graph. So once your degrees are the same, you need to rely on something else. And what you have to turn to is the leading coefficient. So you take whatever your leading coefficient is and that just becomes your horizontal asymptote. My horizontal asymptote here is one and a half which I can see in my picture. So both of those tails are going to be approaching it. So if P, the degree of P equals the degree of Q, then your horizontal asymptote is Y equals the coefficient of P over the leading coefficient of Q. So to put all of that together, all the three different scenarios, if the degree of P is bigger than Q, there's none. If the degree of P is less than Q, it's always Y equals zero. And if the degree of P equals Q, then it's the coefficients that you're going to look at. You are gonna to have to memorize these. Slant asymptote. I mentioned that this was something new. Go ahead and graph this on your calculator with parentheses. And you should get this. So from my denominator, my vertical asymptote, X equals three. That kind of looks good there. Um, comparing my degrees for my horizontal, two is greater than one, so there is no horizontal asymptote. But it kind of looks like a little bit of a diagonal, which is what a slant asymptote is. Slant asymptote kind of goes through diagonally in either direction. So you will have a slant asymptote when the degree of the numerator is exactly one larger than the degree of the denominator. So two compared to one will give you a slant asymptote. That should make sense because two is bigger than one, which means I don't have a horizontal asymptote. So you won't have a horizontal and a slant at the same time. So the next question becomes, well, how do I find the equation of that slant asymptote? I bet you can't wait. Long division, we're finally going to use it. And good news, we can ignore the remainder. We only want the beginning part that will give us an equation of a line. So let's divide. So we're gonna divide out just like we did earlier. And I'm trying to think of what do I have to multiply x by to get x squared, which is x. Then I'm gonna multiply down diagonally. So I get x squared minus three x. I'm gonna put it in parentheses, circle my subtraction sign. Remember you're subtracting down. And right here is where kids make that first common mistake. Negative four minus a negative three X is a negative X. Drag down my negative five and start all over again. What do I have to multiply X by to get negative X? That's a negative one. And you can just stop right there. That's your equation. Y equals X minus one. Let's see if it fits in. Here's negative one with a slope here. And this would be my slant asymptote. So we're going to try a new problem. We're going to put this all together. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor my numerator. So that's going to factor to x plus 5 and x plus 4. It's easier to see your properties in factored form. My numerator tells me my x-intercepts. 
So I have an x-intercept at negative 5, 0 and negative 4, 0. Now we're doing the properties first and then we'll go to the calculator to get the shape. So I have an x-intercept there and an x-intercept there. My vertical asymptote, that comes from my denominator, so that's the equation x equals negative 3. My horizontal asymptote, I'm going to compare my degrees, so 2 to 1. I do not have any. I'm going to jump down to holes. I do not have the same factor on the top and the bottom, so I also don't have any holes. But if I go back and notice my degrees 2 compared to 1, I am going to have a slant asymptote. So we're going to divide that. And x times x is x squared. I'm going to subtract down to get 6x plus 20. And I multiply by 6. So it's not that bad. There's my equation. I'm going to go ahead and draw that in. If it crosses at 6 there, it means it's going to cross at 6 here. So that's my slant asymptote. Got a lot of properties here, and this is very weird looking. So now that we've done all of those properties, now you can pick up your calculator. Always enter the original just in case you made a mistake with the, with the factored one. If you want to check the factored though, you'd have to put an extra pair of parentheses to tell the calculator that that's the entire numerator. And what you're going to find is a shape that goes through both of those x-intercepts, and then it goes up there. So it kind of looks like this. I've skipped over the domain and range, um, but we're thinking with domain, we're coming all the way to negative 3, so negative infinity to negative 3, and negative 3 to a positive infinity. The range, you have to find this max, and you have to find this min. So we've done that before with quadratics. So you would say negative infinity all the way up to 0.17, and then you would say 5.8 up to positive infinity. We do have that gap in the middle. So you need to know where to find all of the pieces. I'm going to start over here. The x-intercepts come from the numerator. The vertical asymptotes come from the denominator, and the domain comes from the denominator as well, and the graph. You really do need to see it. Over here, we have our horizontal asymptote rules comparing P and Q, so I really need to know the numerator and the denominator for that one. For the holes, and you should draw it in as an open circle on your graph. If you have the same factor in the numerator and denominator, you will have a hole. And then slant asymptote also compares the degrees. If it's exactly one larger, you're going to have a slant asymptote, and you'd use long division to find that equation. Nice job.